Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Joss vs. the World. We are talking Rocket League tonight with a ESL monthly elite and one of the um, top 10 teams in North America right now, uh, Mr. Ping Pong Pete. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thanks for having me. I've got to say, I really don't remember most of what we did on stream because we streamed like four days ago. So I actually don't remember like any of the tips that you gave me. I mean, I totally paid attention to the whole entire thing, but <laughs> it's it was a lot to remember. It was a lot to take in. So we're going to pretty much like have to start from scratch, <laughs> I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, so first what you want to do is you want to drive towards the ball with the R2 button. Uh, is that early enough or should we start at the menu again? <laughs> I think, I, yeah, maybe we should just uh, basically go over and tell people that, uh, first of all, so we're talking about Rocket League and um, there were some different camera settings and some different controller settings that we actually went and set up um, that are different than the default. So if you guys haven't already, you should go and check out the VOD for the Rocket League stream just to see what some of those settings are, because I definitely found that they make a really big difference being able to kind of see from a little bit further back and get a better perspective on the ball and kind of what's going on around the ball where the other players are and things like that actually made a big difference and the the camera settings are really important there so if you did miss the live stream on sunday night then uh, just go back and watch the vod and just kind of see what some of those settings are right matt <laughs> yep sorry <laughs> uh yeah the the camera settings are a pretty big pretty big difference when you go away from default with default you're not going to see much of the field you won't see a lot of your teammates uh, and you, you just you don't have very good perspective so it's good to tweak those a little bit uh, just to give you a bit more of an advantage so then uh, after we went in and did some of those camera settings, then we kind of went in and looked, took a little bit of a look at the ladder because there's a, a bunch of different ladders and you have to do placement matches in each. So you have to kind of decide what, I guess, what what style of Rocket League you want to play? Because there's there's a few different ladders. Do you want to maybe tell us a little bit about like laddering up in Rocket League? Yeah. So for uh, casual play, there there's the casual playlists. Uh, you can play 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4. You can also play in what's called Rocket Labs, uh, which are kind of the experimental new stages. Uh, most of them are very quirky and unique uh, with different elevated platforms, some of them with goals back to back, some of them with multiple goals per team. A um, little bit there. They're just a way to mix it up. They all have the same theme and style as far as visuals are concerned. Uh, and what the, the reason they do that is so that Psyonix can actually pump them out a little bit faster without worrying about uh, you know, having an artist uh, texture and skin every level individually. So Rocket Labs is a place to try out the new stuff. And then there's also a, um, what's the name of it? There's Snow Day uh, with a puck for the Canadian hockey fans. And there's also now Hoops, which is a much smaller court with great big baskets. And you get to try to play basketball with cars. Uh, it's very difficult and very, very different from the basic game. Um, other than that, there's also uh, the ranked or competitive playlist that they're calling it now. And there's 1v1, 2v2, uh, 3v3, where you can sign up or, uh, sorry, queue in by yourself so that there's no matchmaking with a full party versus matchmaking versus individuals. Or there's also so uh, standard, which is just 3v3. And you can either queue in by yourself if you really want to, or you can queue up with a full party. Right. So when we were doing the laddering on the stream on Sunday, we were actually doing 2v2s, right? That's That's what we queued into? Yeah, we were doing 2v2s. It, it makes it a lot easier for the two of us who were able to communicate, even if it was with push to talk while I was trying to do aerials and use my other thumb for a push to talk. It did not go well. Anyways, yeah, we were doing 2v2s. It uh, makes the most sense with just two players. Actually, funny story about that. So it turns out that the whole time that Matt was doing push to talk and showing me how to play, his mic was actually open to everybody in the game. So everyone was actually listening to him, a totally one-sided conversation because I had made sure that my voice chat was completely off. 
And so basically they heard all of Matt's instructional stuff, including like, I'm just going to stay back now and let you do all the offense. And they were like, are you teaching her to play? Like, what's going on? Yeah, unbeknownst to me, one of the settings, uh, there's a checkbox for it just says checkbox push to talk. So I turned it off, assuming that that would disable me from being able to talk to the other team or to my own teammates in game because I, we were using our own voice chat. We were using Discord. So I figured, OK, well, we'll keep the efforts there. And if I disable this push to talk, then great. They won't hear me. Uh, turns out turning off push to talk enables voice activation, even though it's not described anywhere in the settings. So every time I spoke, I, I didn't notice it at first, but the other team started responding and I could hear them, but Jocelyn has the other team's audio muted. So she wasn't able to hear what they were saying. But after one long description of talking about Jocelyn's positioning and how she was doing well or what she could have done maybe a little bit differently, somebody on the other team was like, are, are you like giving her lessons or something? And I just shook my head. I, I had no idea my mic was just open the whole time it was pretty freaking hilarious <laughs> um so basically what we were doing when we were playing on the ladder is uh we were ranking or we were doing our placement matches which you have to do 10 placement matches in each of those ladders that matt described in order to kind of start your whole journey on ranking up in rocket league so uh, i think we only made it through four or five placement matches but uh eventually there are kind of was it four groupings of kind of skill levels? Yeah, so there's prospect rank, challenger rank. Uh, there's the different stars. There's shooting star, rising star, all star, and superstar. And then at the top, there are three special groups for champions. There's champion, super champion, and grand champion. Um, and then within those, there's also the top 100 individual players. Uh, based on how many people are in the different ranks, the top 100 could span more than just the champions. But I think right now the majority of the different ladders, which are all a unique rank individually per player. So if I'm a grand champion in standard in 3v3, and my rank in a different ladder is totally dependent on how I do in the other ladder, not the other. Not the other. I, I just said a lot of others. But, but yeah, hopefully that makes some sense. Um, the ladders are individual from one another, so it doesn't matter what you do in one. Uh, each one you have to rank up individually. Okay, so we've talked about the ladders. We've talked about your different settings and stuff. So now let's assume that we've queued into a match and we are ready to play some Rocket League. So uh, basically... Rocket League is a little bit different than some of the other things, uh, other games that we've covered on the show. So, so far we've covered um, Overwatch and we've covered Heroes, both of which have different objectives based on which map you actually queue into. Rocket League is different in that the objective is always the same. Score as many goals against your opponent as possible in five minutes, done. <laughs> so, um, but some of the maps are a little bit different. Um, there is Wasteland, the train station, and then everything else. And so, Matt, do you want to just go over some of the differences between those, those I guess, three groupings of maps, those two maps, and then everything else? <laughs> yeah, so your standard map, uh, it's a rectangular soccer field with basic walls. The corners are angled a little bit uh, kind of flat in the in the middle of the corner so that ball can bounce around them instead of roll around the corner. Um, and then there's uh, the, the net placements and everything. All the boosts are all in the exact same spot. So the majority of maps are identical. And then there's urban, which is uh, an indoor train station arena kind of thing. The only difference with that map is actually some of the boosts are placed a little bit differently. And it, it, it doesn't make much of a difference for the most part because the ball performs exactly the same in all different parts of the field. But the boost alignment is a little bit to throw you off on kickoffs. Uh, for some players, just depending on where they're used to going. The biggest different uh, field is Wasteland. Um, wasteland is almost like a bowl. Everything is kind of angled down towards the center of the field, and the outer corners are completely rounded. So unlike the other ones where you might get more bouncing out of the corners, the ball on this one tends to roll directly around and back into or above the net. Um, so because of that, a lot of the play... Uh, is a lot more focused in the center of the field and bounces and rolls will always kind of end up at the net. So there's a lot of scoring opportunities. And because of the different angles, it actually makes for a big difference in prediction and being able to 
being able to get used to where the ball is going to go. Which is actually a really big, really big thing in Rocket League because you learn the game one way and then all of a sudden you get wasteland thrown at you and then people like me just cry. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a huge difference. And at the start of season two, they find they well not finally they added wasteland into the ranked map rotation so there's no voting for maps there's no option or opportunity to change what map you're playing um every single game that you queue up for in rocket league you get added to a new server and then that new server just rolls a wheel and decides what map you're going to play it on and there are a lot of people complaining about wasteland when season two started Everyone just realizes over time, we're going to have to get used to it because Wasteland's just the start. And Rocket Labs is going to be the feeder for maps that they're going to keep adding to ranked. Uh, some of them hopefully never make it in because some of them are terrible. But we'll see what happens. I really like the Rocket Labs ones. I find them super, super fun, which is probably why the actual competitive people don't like them. But <laughs> some of them are really great. I love the one that's like a donut. And that's the one I hope never makes it in. <laughs> it, it is really unique and it's a lot of fun to play. But at the same time, the the whole teamwork and strategy thing, it's, it's like an entirely different game just on a single map, um, which maybe from some perspectives would be a good thing in competitive rank play. But uh, for the most part, competitive rank play needs to be relatively standardized with a few tweaks as opposed to a completely different game. Uh, in, in my opinion, at least. And I think there's a lot of other people that share that same opinion, at least on Reddit that I've seen. So, <laughs> And so now we are on our map, whatever that may be. And so we talked a little bit in the stream about, like we kind of went over how you actually control your car. And it's great because for the most part, for the new player, what car you pick doesn't really matter. All the cars technically have slightly different... Um, hitboxes so like areas of the car like the basically the box around the car that will actually hit the ball um it's slightly different depending on the shape of your car but for people like me who are just trying to hit the car or the ball with the car <laughs> the car with the ball wrong way jocelyn come on <laughs> it's you know it's not that big of a difference that we really need to focus on it for the purposes of this show but um we did go over car control we went over some of the things that um you have to do when positioning and, and, you know, all the different things. So if you're looking for that kind of information, I think it's probably best if you go and look at the VOD that we did of Rocket League, because um, it's kind of, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do. There's double jumps and flying and flipping and diving and all that kind of stuff, as well as just driving your car around normally. And talking about that kind of stuff is a little bit weird on an audio only podcast. Um, but maybe Matt, you could just give some like, tips and tricks for people who are just coming in of kind of like what they should be focusing on when they first get into their ranked match. So maybe um, something, some stuff about like the kickoff and then having boost and then maybe um, positioning. Sure. Yeah. So some, some pretty basic stuff. Um, it, it's most like the real game of soccer in the sense that when you have some five-year-old kids starting to play soccer for the first time, everyone just goes for the ball. So there's a swarm around the ball at all times, whether it's little kids or brand new Rocket League players. So in Rocket League, going for the ball is definitely important, but you want to make your hits count. You don't want to just chase the ball into a corner, especially if your teammate's already there. You want to try to play so that every hit that you make on the ball is actually worthwhile in going towards if not a pass to your teammate then maybe it's a shot on net or a clear away from yours um, some absolute basics though you want to make sure that the closest person for every kickoff is the one person that goes for the ball um, the other players can either sit back and wait in net if it's only a two on two situation because a kickoff could be launched straight at your net and you want somebody to be there to stop it uh, the other option is if you know the ball isn't on its way to the net, the person who didn't go for the kickoff should be going to grab some boost because then you can support the play and move forward from there. So that actually, the whole kickoff goal thing happened to us <laughs> when Matt wasn't able to effectively fly because he was trying to push to talk at the same time with his awkward claw hand. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting and fun, but um, yeah, you definitely need to be careful with the kickoffs. And uh, I think, yeah, we had a lot of fun. I think there were some things that I struggled with a little bit. Like, for whatever reason, 
I have trouble hitting the ball. And I think that when we were talking about controls, we realized one thing that I do is when I'm driving forward, I'm trying to like steer forward and you don't actually have to do that. You can just hit your, um, the gas. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's controls that will angle your vehicle while you're air, when, while you're in the air. So if you jump with your car and you're moving the left stick in any direction, it's going to point your car in that direction or rotate or spin, whatever you're trying to do. So what, what you're used to doing is maybe pushing up or just holding a direction in the general sense of where your character is going, which makes sense in a lot of other games where you're controlling a character that's running around. But in a driving game, you've got your gas and you've got your brake or reverse. So just pushing those is what you're going to need to do to move forward. Uh, the, the left stick is used on the ground for steering, and then it's also used in the air for rotation and flips. So if you're just holding forward on the stick and you jump, your car is going to start to roll forward into a slow front flip. But yeah, there's double jumping, which can make you flip faster. There, there's a bunch of different things that you can do with it. But generally, you don't want to touch the stick unless you need to move your car in a certain direction other than forward, which it's already doing. Yeah, I am I am just the worst at that. And I think that's why I struggle so much with Rocket League. And I think one thing that you brought up when we were actually streaming is basically that because it is a game of physics, it's a little bit different than uh, some of the other stuff that we've looked at so far. Like with the other games that we've talked about on the show before, it's very much like learn your character, know your skills, like know your role, and you'll kind of, you can move between characters and you get better I think Rocket League has a much, much, much steeper learning curve because it is physics-based. It's not like you can go look up a super awesome car build and then all of a sudden you're going to take your game to the next level because you know the items you're supposed to get or, you know, the, the different combos of your abilities or whatever. So Rocket League very much is a labor of love, I think. And you have to spend the time to play to get used to being in that space and you know how big your car is and what angles do what to the ball and how to hit the effing ball in the first place <laughs> for for a lot of things yes if, if you want to make it to a more competitive level then it's going to take the time for the trial and error process to happen you need to know that when you jump what is going to happen to your car when you jump at full speed while trying to flip what's going to happen to your car when you jump off of a wall at full speed what's going to happen jump with your car all these different things come in time and practice and in one of the most fun ways of exploring the game is just playing it right what while you're leveling up while you're ranking up you're going to be playing with people that are generally at the same level with you which makes the game a lot of fun at all different levels. So you're going to have those moments where you do something spectacular that you don't even understand how you did it. And you're going to want to relive that moment. You're going to want to try to either practice and try to do that thing again. You can save the replay of your game. You can analyze it, watch it from different angles and see exactly what you did or hope you figure out exactly what you did and then go from there. And, and there's, there's training modes, there's free play where you can just drive around with unlimited boost yourself and a ball on the field. You can just practice hitting it up the wall, off the walls, uh, straight at the net. You can try dribbling it on top of your car where you just kind of balance it and wave back and forth, uh, practicing jukes on imaginary opponents. You can also do exhibition play against bots, which are not the greatest. They, they don't have very good AI, but there are obstacles that you can practice getting around. So the, the more you play, the better you're going to get in Rocket League. That's just how it works. So I mentioned off the top of the show uh, how well you guys, your team, the Xylophone Zebras, did in the RLCS a couple weeks ago. There was a qualifier and you guys got knocked out right before making it to the group stage by uh, Mocket, who is a very good Rocket League team. And so I wondered if you could just like talk a little bit about uh, the tournament experience versus the ladder experience, because obviously if you're playing in a tournament, you have a full team of three players and that's who you're going in with versus like queuing in solo and maybe like some of the differences there and what people might want to watch out for as they're solo queuing on ladder. Yeah, so solo play uh, has a lot to do with, with trust and, and a lack of communication at the same time. 
Uh, in Rocket League, there's some quick chat options where you can tell your teammates uh, certain things that your opponents won't see. So you can say things like, I got it, or centering, or defending, or take the shot. Uh, those, or oops. Or oops. Uh, those quick chat options are one of the easiest ways to communicate with your team, uh, just to tell them some general ideas of what you're doing. Whereas in a tournament situation, the majority of the teams are going to have open communication, open comms, where you can say exactly what you're doing, exactly what you're planning to do, where you're positioned, what you want your teammates to do with the ball, um, or when to rotate, different things like that, and just to help with the flow of the game. So there's a lot more communication, and it's, it, it's a lot more balanced and controlled play, where everyone on the team is trying to be as best as possible in sync to make sure that everyone knows what's happening. Um, whereas in solo play, if you're queuing in with two other players that are also queuing in by themselves, everyone wants to be the hero. Everyone wants to get the goals. It really helps to be a player that can not only read your opponents and try to find some weaknesses and exploit them, but also read your own teammates and understand how they're playing and how they want to play and try to supplement them with your skills and make sure that if they're playing really defensive, maybe you're going, you're going to go forward and be a striker. If they're going for the ball like crazy, you're going to want to hang back and hope they can score, or maybe you can get some quick uh, recoveries and turn the play around and go score yourself. So there's, there's different ways to play solo and with a team. It's uh, depending on what you have at, uh, at your hands. So I think that that's pretty much it, unless you have some kind of uh, parting words of wisdom as a super amazing Rocket League player <laughs> that you want to share with everybody. Um, so yeah, if you, if you do, I'll let you have at it. But I think that's pretty much it for us with Rocket League. Um, no, no crazy words of wisdom or anything. The, the, the majority of things, and it, it's really hard to say, or I guess motivate somebody to do it. But if you want to get good at Rocket League, you just got to play it and you got to play a lot. Um, not, not too much, but a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I think the whole a lot versus too much is something that we struggle with a lot around here for sure. <laughs> But I think, yeah, it, I'm, it's kind of like anything. The The more you play, the better you're going to get. And I think Rocket League, like I said, is one of those games that has a very, very steep learning curve. So you're probably going to feel like me, like you're maybe not getting better at the rate that you want to get better. But then all of a sudden you'll have like this aha moment and then you'll be able to do whatever it is, whether it's the front flip to get to the kickoff faster or, you know, maybe you learn how to drive on the wall and hit it off and center it. Or, you know, like there's all these things that almost like kind of throw your game to the next level in these big, huge incremental steps. So uh, the more you play, the faster those steps are going to come. So absolutely just get in there play and uh, like Matt mentioned there's actually like you can have voice communication because this is something else that um, generally makes people not want to go into competitive ladders is that there's you know whether it's voice or text or whatever but you can turn all of that kind of stuff off um, if you're lucky enough to queue into a PlayStation person then the only thing that they're going to see is like the built-in quick response things they can't even type to you if you're on PC so that's awesome. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of ways to kind of avoid all of that negativity if you want to. So um, I very much just, everyone, go do your 10 placement matches and just see how it shakes out. Rocket League is really um, probably one of the least toxic PvP communities that I've seen. So, I mean, obviously there's some salt, but there's a little bit of salt in everything. So I think that, yeah, if you just uh, just have at it and go do your placement matches, placement matches and absolutely let me know how you did in the comments below the video i always love to hear from you guys uh, i think that's going to do it for us tonight matt where can everyone find you online uh you can find me online at twitch.tv slash ping pong pete and also on twitter at mr underscore carney k-e-a-r-n-e-y 
Thank you so much for joining me. If you guys want to find everything that I do, you can go to jossplays.com. It is the same as my Twitch and my Twitter, and there's links to every, everything. So thank you so much for listening to this episode of Joss vs. the World. And we will be back next week, I believe, with Smite. So uh, <laughs> that is as long as Smite is actually working because we've had some glitchy issues with Smite lately. But... The plan is for the next episode of Joss vs. the World to cover Smite, which I know I have been talking about for years, and I'm sure you guys are just itching to get into it, so I can't wait to share one of my favorite games with you. So I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for hanging out, and good luck on those ladders. <laughs>